Hello, my name is David Webb, and this is a video for DweeboVision. I am a Scrabble Grandmaster, and in this video I am going to play Scrabble while providing in-game commentary on my moves. Hopefully this will help to improve your game, and be fun to watch. The game has just started, so let's join the action. It's me to go first. I don't have a bingo. And it's a pretty unbalanced rack, so I'm looking to score well and resolve the rack. And Heinz does that. When you have two S's, there's no problem at all with playing off one of them for any score. Now this is a slightly more balanced rack, but I have non bingo -y tiles in the F and the X. What I'd like to do is play off both of those and score reasonably well. So a play of Fox or Fax would do the trick. I need to be mindful in case there is a bingo but there aren't many bingos with F's and X's now what opportunities are available I'm looking to play down through the eye of Hinds but all I can do in that spot I think is play my X Ah, well, what I can do is this. Playing above Heinz. The rack leave isn't as good as it would be if I had retained the E with AST, but the score of 38 is good, and getting rid of the F with the X is also good. Great, I draw the blank with an M. I have Syntagm or Gymnast. Foxy takes an R and an S after it. So I have syntagms in column 8 beginning with the S of Hinds. It's a pretty blocked board. So it's quite possible that all my bingos will be blocked. I need to consider what other 7 letter bingos I have with the blank. Or with this rack. So I'm mentally running through the alphabet for the blank. See if this works. Certainly with the blank as a vowel, I'm spending a little bit more time because this is a consonant heavy rack, but I can't see anything here. Staying. Great. And fantastic Syntagms is not blocked. Although only scores nine points, which is good. It doesn't take anything in front, so I haven't got anything to look for in column one. Let me finish going through the alphabet. That's the gymnast syntagm rack. Well, that looks promising, but I can't see anything. Once you've seen a bingo, sometimes it can be harder to find an alternative one because you know it's not so essential. Or you feel it's not so essential. Okay, I think I am going to play Syntagms. I think staying does take an S, so I could play stayings in this spot. But I think Syntagms is more likely to draw a challenge, and there's a little between the plays. I think they score the same. And I'm rewarded with a pretty poor rack, but whenever you're drawing seven random tiles, it's not surprising when sometimes it's not a fabulous rack. But a play of FUD would help to resolve this rack. Great, I do draw the penalty. So that's five fewer points for my opponent, or five points deducted from his score. I now have a hundred point lead. Again, I have two S's, so no problem at all with playing off one of them. 
the F is non bingoey the U is non bingoey and the second D is non bingoey which is why I was drawn to FUD. Foud is also good. So a play of Foud or Foud somewhere would be worth considering. But this is a pretty blocked board, apart from the floaters in Sintams. There aren't a lot of other places to consider. I don't have, or sorry, neither of my vowels goes in front of the L, so I don't have many parallel options or many plays in row E above low. Okay, and V takes nothing in front of it, so that's, I haven't got any plays in columns one and three. But I may now have a play in row E. Of, of takes a D in front. So I've got dodos, but that keeps the F and the U, and it also doesn't score fantastically well. I can't see a way of playing FUD or FOUD. I could play FUDs in row I. Only 16 points and I'm opening up an easy scoring opportunity for my opponent in column 1. So, I'm now looking at the floaters in Sintams and I've got funds. Now this achieves most of what I'm looking for. 19 points. Okay, it's not great on score, but this board does not have a huge number of scoring opportunities. Plays off the F and the U, the non-bingoey tiles, and the duplicate D. Rack leaves not too bad, given what I started with. Through an L, I would have poolside. What about the available floaters? I'm considering the bottom four tiles in Sintams. Gosh, the A looks tempting. I think I think I'm thinking of apodosis, which doesn't quite work with my rack. I've got the ISO prefix, so I've got ISO plus dope. Yeah, all those words are good. Only 13 points for my opponent, which is good. So I don't think I do have a bingo. I'm just revisiting the bottom tiles in Sintams in case I've overlooked something or in case something jumps into my mind, but it it doesn't. Now I note that the Q takes an I after it, so I could have a play in column 7 ending I, E, D, so pied would work. But I certainly want to sort out this duplicate O problem. Now I could play VoIP in row D. That would leave D-E-O-S, not a bad rack leave. D-E-I-S would be better. 18 points for VoIP. And I've got a huge lead. There are floaters in Sintams. So given the size of my leave, lead and the bingoiness of this rack leave, I'm thinking about keeping the board open in order to maximise the chances of me getting another bingo. This doesn't look like the sort of board which is worth shutting down at this stage of the game. We're still in the first first half of the game. But is there anything better than VoIP? Another reason for playing VoIP is the lack of alternatives. Yeah, I can't see anything really which compares. Now, this looks quite nice. But what do I have? Do I have a 7? Do I have an 8? I'm not sure I do. I've got the SYN sin prefix, but then I have a lot of vowels with what's left. Yep, good bingo by my opponent, 71 points. I've also got the T floater in last place, which is available for IEST ending words. I've still got a 60 point lead.
Now, I can't see a bingo. Well, except I haven't quite given up yet. I'm considering the M and G of Sintams. I don't know why I'm returning to the G. Can't see anything there. What about the M? No. But this is quite a nice rack. If I played off Y and O somewhere, rack leave of D E I N S is quite promising. And f and good five letter rack leaves are really bingoy because you're only drawing two tiles. Now what I'm thinking about doing is playing OI down here. This will score well. It'll get rid of the Y. It'll give me the rack leave I want. 28 points. Now what might be better is a five letter play beginning at N2, placing the Y where it is now. And I can't see a way of doing that. And I can't see anywhere better for my Y. Great, I have Destin. So I have Destin's playable in column 10, making Y, A, E as well. Do I have another bingo? I'm looking at uh, column 1 for bingos ending I, E, S, T or I, S, T. Can't see anything there. So at the moment it's Destin's. Destin is also a seven letter bingo, but I can't see anywhere where that plays. The A of Sintams is a floater for bingos ending in an A. And a do takes an S, so row L is also available for bingos with a S in them. So what if I had an A with my current rack? Andy sight. Okay, that does not play, and I don't think it has an anagram. Can't see anything onto the T of Telly Rans. What about the E? That's available in last spot. So an anagram of neediest. Can't see anything. It'll be galling if Destins is blocked because I have not seen anything else at all. Got the M and the G of Sintams to consider. So it's steeding. Ah, steeding and ingested. Okay, I've managed to block both of those with OI. Ah, blocked. Destins is blocked. How annoying. Gosh. That is really frustrating. I, mean, I still have a 60 point lead, but it is so nice to play bingos. I'm looking to see if I've got anything through the G and the R, but nine letter plays are always hard to spot. And I can't see one. Now the problem with this rack is that I don't have any high scoring tiles, so having been denied the bingo, I don't have an easy alternative play which scores well. And a rack leave of 60 is fairly slender. If I only get 10 points and my opponent gets 40, then the lead has shrunk dramatically. Now Stark does take an S. Both blanks have gone. And in fact, my S is the last one. Probably worth hanging on to. And in any event, this is a really bingo-y rack, so I don't want to mess with it too much. Maybe I should just play something like Ed down here. Now the advantage of Ed is that it gives me the rack leave I want, and that Tote takes an S on the end, and I have the only remaining S. And the score of 17, well, I probably couldn't do much better than that, unless I wrecked the rack and burnt the S by making a play in row O.
It would be 37 points if I made a play in row O, placing the D on the double letter square. But I think tote for 17 is better. Right, I have E Metins, which is playable at the moment in column 12. Voip wasn't such a great opening play. My E does not go in front of the P. I can't play below the P. It's only the O and the U which go in front of the P. Now, do I have anything? Okay. Ads takes an E. So, does E Metins, which has been blocked, have an anagram? So, well, I've got E met in parallel to Zig, and that retains the S, burns off a lot of tiles, so it expedites the end of the game. Now, Zig scored 52 points, so we're now in the scenario I was talking about where I'm only 30 points behind. Now, I've got the, f the floating T and E of Tellyrands, which are available for bingos. I think Emetines is good. That doesn't play. And My Nets is good. That also doesn't play. So I think I should play Parallel to Zig and look at how many E's are left, a vast number. So I was slightly hesitant about playing off both of them. Let me see what this scores. It certainly wrecks the rack leave. But does the score justify it? 37 points, and if I don't play there, my opponent probably will, given how many E's are outstanding. Now, is there a slightly better play in this spot? The word would have to have E... T I or E N I. Well, not that I can see. Well, there are some of the E's, so I certainly was right in not uh, worrying about playing off all of mine. Now, is N sewed good? E N S E W E D. Ensued. Well, it certainly plays. Insode is not good because the, the play is sinewed. But what about ensued? I'm drawn to it. I am drawn. Now, is there a an alternative bingo, which I'm sure of? That would be one onto the T or the E of Tellyrands. No, there isn't. Well, I am going to try this. I'm 69 points ahead. Ensued should lock up the game if it's good. I have some doubt about this move, but it's not a wild guess. Let's see if it stays on the board. If it does, I get a great score and a good rack. So this is the time where I hold my breath. Very hard to look for nice spots for my J when it may disappear in a moment. Great! Challenged! And it's good! I get my 83 points, my opponent loses his 5 points, I have a massive lead, and I have the J. Fantastic! Now, I immediately see that I can play Jaunt at C3. That's going to be a pretty big score, 40 or 50 points. Through an L, I would have Jubilant. So, need to make sure that um, I don't miss that if my opponent provides it. Great, I'm so pleased about that. I did have doubt. The, the play of Ensued was really, it had the, the maximum amount of doubt for a word that I would still play. Um, I very rarely play words that I know are phonies, or never, in fact. 
but there's all there's quite often a degree of doubt within ensued I had um quite a quite a big but still small amount of doubts I'm looking at the W of ensued to see if I've got a J play through that onto the triple letter square at h15 can't see one Jaunt has the anagram of Junta. Can't see anywhere for that. Well, I have that at A11 down, but I'm not sure that's a particularly fabulous move. Now, J2 is a hot spot, triple letter square. If I can place my J there and have a six letter play ending with an E, I would get a big, big score. So, is Jubate good? J U B A T E. Not sure about that. I may be confusing it with Jew Gate. There goes the L, but it's in the wrong spot for Jubilance. I've got seven minutes on the clock and there's 21 tiles left. So I am actually uh, experiencing some uh, time shortage. Now, my choices, I think, are Bungie at J2. 42 points. Or this. Fifty points. I like the the extra score with Jaunt. It's taking out a bingo lane or bingo lanes, and it's not opening up column one. Well, pretty atrocious rack, but I now have a two hundred point lead. I have a lot of duplicate tiles. I have a lot of non bingoy tiles, but I have a decent vowel consonant balance and I have scoring tiles in the B and the M so I should be able to play my way through this pretty comfortably. I am by is good and I am but is also good. Arg I think takes an H on the end. Certainly takes an A in front. So I could play I am by in column 10. Let's see what that scores. Quite a nice rack leave, scoring tile and a vowel. 22 points. If I played just I am in row A, 28 points, oh, much bigger score. Twenty eight points. Now looking at the vowels that are left. Well, 10 out of 20 tiles, so I could be drowned in vowels, but I've got the scoring tile in the B if that happens. Now, am I missing anything better in row A? I think Bambi is good, but that doesn't play. I could play that in column 11. 32 points for Bambi. But that would burn off all my scoring tiles. And there aren't a huge number of scoring tiles left. So I think this is fine. Well, I draw two of the remaining scoring tiles, the C and the V. Looking at the tiles that are left, there's just the C, P and W for score. And it's not a particularly bingo -y bunch of letters with no S's or blanks. Only 15 points for my opponent. Now, I'm looking at the J2 spot again to see if I can get my B, my V, or my C on that square with a six letter play ending on the first E of Tellyrands. Because if there is a play there, that's going to score a lot likely to be optimal. My opponent isn't opening up new bingo lanes and in any event a bingo, a bingo is not going to damage me or damage my winning prospects which are guaranteed. I have four minutes left. There are six tiles in the bag so a play at J2 would be perfect in terms of leaving one in the bag. 
I'm looking to play off two of the B, C and the V. And I just can't see a six letter play ending with an E and beginning with one of those three. I don't think Carvey is good. I think Cabri is good. I think Cabri is good. Or Carib. Okay, well that makes me feel confident about both of them. I'm retaining a scoring tile with the V, and that the V is a good tile to have in this situation. Cabri 32 points. C it's good to have in first spot. It doesn't open up column one. And the V is also a good tile to retain because J14 is available for it. Dev is good. Great, I'm glad I retained the V, because the rest of the tiles I've drawn are pretty pretty awful. I've got Vrau, which plays at F14 down, placing the V and the W on triple letter squares. That's going to be a big score. I've now got a 230 point lead. I've got the over prefix, but I can't see a seven or eight letter bingo with this rack. Great, Vrau stays available. Pretty sure this is best. I will just pause after putting it down. Check a few things. Right, 42 points, great score. All my opponent's words are good, so that's fine. I'm keeping double E, which is my remaining rack. That certainly can play in many, many spots. My opponent's rack is ELPR. I don't really need to worry about that. That doesn't impact the winningness of the winningness of Vrau. So I get uh, over 500 points, which is always nice. Now my opponent's got 10 minutes left. He's got a pretty poor rack. He may well play pretty quickly. He can play Paler at K1 and Parl in the same spot. So he should be going out. Okay, he doesn't. Where's he played that F10? Okay, Pelland Pies. So I've got two minutes to find the best place for double E. I can certainly play it at A14 across. 11 points. See what it scores down here. 12, that's better. I don't want to keep my opponent hanging on forever um, because he's been crushed. 14, of course face to face, I, I would run the clock down in the interest of finding the best play. I can get 14 as well at N14 down. Anywhere better for my double E. Well, having said I'm not running the clock down, I appear to be doing that. Yeah, okay, I think that's the best available. So just wait for my opponent to formally end the game. Which he doesn't do. Come on. Yes. And the final score is 281 for my opponent, 520 to me, a winning margin of 239 points. So a massive, massive victory. Let's see what I missed. So it was me to go first. I played Heinz. And, yep, that looks best. Foxy at G3, that looks best. I also have Fatso for one point less, but that burns the S, although retaining the X. And Sintam scored the most. Stygian and Staying were both available at I7. I see making Eds and ST. Fair enough, I didn't uh, consider that, but Sintams was certainly best. Foss at I3. Okay, making XIS and Chins. That would have been a big play. Terrible Rackley burns off both of my S's. So, funds for 21 fewer points, keeping DOS. Hmm, well, Foss may well have been better. But it's also possible that it wasn't. 
Gupta M8 did not consider that. What did I do? I did VoIP for 18. VoIP is better than Ratcleave is much better than four points, better than the Ratcleave after Gooped. So did I miss something here? No. Great. Okay, this is where I played OY. I could have got four more points by playing DOY, but I think the D adds value to the rack leave. And when you've got a five tile rack leave, it's worth sacrificing points to retain over a four tile one, because you're much, much closer to a bingo. This is where Destins was cruelly blocked. And thankfully I didn't overlook something good elsewhere. So denied is being suggested making Chi. Not a big fan of that. It opens up the column eight triple word square. So what did I do? Can't see my play there. Well I played Ed for seventeen and I like that because the Rackley was so good. Yeah, he met in at J13, that was my play. And ensued, there you can see it in red and white, it was good, or red and grey. And Jubait was good for 62 points at J2, instead I played Jaunt at C3, well Jubait would have been better. I am by at G14. Making Deb and my 31 points. Bambi playable in the same spot for 33. So my play of I am for 28. Probably pretty similar. It is taking out the main bingo lane on the board. Which, although it wouldn't have affected winningness, would have affected um, winning spread. Now this is where I played Cabri. And, well, doesn't appear on the list of possibilities. All the considerations are in column 14. Well, I prefer Cabri. Rewove. Well, I didn't consider that. I played Vrau pretty quickly, but I think my double E rack leave is going to score a lot more than the rack leave of you, so Vrau is better. And finally, 14 was the maximum number of points, and that's what I got. So, um, pretty exciting game. I didn't feel that I established uh, a huge margin right from the get-go, but uh, that um, winning margin did develop during the course of the game and ended up being in excess of 200 points. And it's it's really good to um, get a winning margin of over 200 points because you feel like you've crushed your opponent, and that's a, a good feeling. So I hope you enjoyed watching that video and got something out of it. My name's David Webb, and this has been a video for Dweebo Vision.